Lord. Praise the Lord. Turn to Matthew chapter number 18. Matthew chapter number 18. I want to speak this morning before you don't, don't, don't worry about standing right this minute. You, you take care of the business because God, God's going to do something in hearts in this building this morning that I've yet to see. God's going to do something in every spirit in this morning that I've yet to see here in, my, in, in, our, in this ministry and in, 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 the, in the Lord moving. I know God's moved in some powerful ways. But wait till you feel what the Lord's going to say to your heart and my heart. Wait till you sense in the next two and three and four and five days what the Lord's going to do in your spirit. As I got to thinking on this, I want to speak of a weakness here this morning. It's a weakness that has frustrated spiritual growth of many, many good people throughout all the ages of eternity. I want to speak this morning of a weakness that has affected both the young and the old, both the rich and the poor. Its role is not limited by boundaries. It's not limited by race. It's not limited by creed. It's not limited by how you stand socially. Matter of fact, this morning, it affects those who are weak. It poisons the spirit of a person to the point that they are hobbled by its power. It's got the power that I'm going to speak to you about this morning. If you don't let it go, it's got the power to drag your soul to hell. Woo, my, my, my. Yet this morning, I want to say when released of the hold that it has on you, you'll be able to soar in heavenly heights that you've never experienced in your life. Mm. It's kept many people from rising to their full potential. It's roadblocked those who are talented and favored. It's one of the most effective tools of Satan. And this morning I'm talking about an unforgiving spirit. And I want to say this with all my heart, it's a spirit. It's an unforgiving spirit. Somebody said this, said, without forgiveness there is no future. It's affected individuals. It's affected families. And how many knows what's true of families is true of cities, and what's true of cities is true of states, and what's true of states is for the nation and so on. Let me say it again, without forgiveness, there is no future. Matter of fact, we could even say this, there is a future, but it's not a good future. It's not a good future. Stand with me this morning, please, if you're able, to Matthew chapter number 18. Without forgiveness this morning, there is no freedom in your life. Without forgiveness, there will be zero recovery in your life. Without forgiveness, there will be no healing in your life. I want you to eat those words with me this morning. Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 21. If you've never read this story, this could be quite the most powerful story you've read up to date on this concerning forgiveness here this morning. Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 21. Then came Peter to him. And said, Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? And for I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times. Seventy. We know that's 490 times. Now Jesus wasn't trying to get him to recognize a number. He is trying to tell him about forgiveness. All right, let's go on. Verse number 23, Therefore is a kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Y'all want to know how much that is? $19,200,000. That's how many talents he owed him. How would you like to owe somebody $19,200,000 and didn't know how you was going to pay it? You didn't have $10 in your pocket. Here's this man, owes this man. 
$19,200,000, but for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. Listen, the servant therefore fell down and worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay it all back. I'll pay every bit of it. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion. This is the way the Lord handles us. My, 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 this is the way the Lord's hand moves on our life. He was moved with compassion, and he loosed him. Woo, if you've never read anything more powerful in your life, the Word of God says, and forgave him the debt. Some of you are wondering how you're going to pay $5,000, or $19,200,000, and the man forgive him, said, you don't owe me a dime. But the same servant who was just forgiven of the debt went out and found one of his fellow servants which owed him a hundred pence. You don't know how much a hundred pence is? $17. $17. And he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat saying, Pay me what you owe. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him saying, Have patience with me and I will pay all of it. And he would not. But went and cast him into prison that he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he called him, said unto him, O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave you all of that debt because thou desired me to do it. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I have had pity on you. I want to stop there. And I want to preach this morning simply these words. I want you to understand there is torture in an unforgiving spirit. It'll bring you to a place you never thought you'd be. It'll bring you to a place where you can't even control your own thoughts because those thoughts are controlling you. But there is freedom this morning in forgiveness. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Woo, there's freedom this morning. Hallelujah, Heavenly Father. Lord, this is your word, and now we break it open together. What power we felt already just in the word of God being read out of, out of this Bible. Lord, what freedom we felt in it. And God, I thank you even right now for the Spirit of God that's going to help us preach and going to help us hear. And Lord, for that, we thank you for what you're going to do even around this altar in a few minutes. I thank you for every chain that's going to be broken. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that people are going to be set free like they never thought they could be set free even right now, Lord. And we give you praise for every listener this morning not able to be here, but they're listening on social network. You're going to free them right there where they're at today. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. Look at somebody and tell them you love them. Now, what I'm going to do this morning for three minutes, I want to show you something that, that even as I got ready again to hear it this morning, I couldn't fathom it in my mind. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't conceive it. How many has heard over the last two weeks of the Facebook killer and what he did? Raise your hand. Several of you. Some of you haven't, so I want to give you an introduction here. Over the last two or three weeks, there was a, there was a man who went Facebook Live, and he actually killed a, 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 a man right on Facebook Live. Just didn't know him from anybody. The, the, the man was working in his garden. And he just went on a rampage, said he had killed up to 15 people, and there was a manhunt for several, several, several days for this man. And what you're going to do is you're going to pick up partway in an interview right now of this family that their dad was killed that day. You're going to hear three minutes' worth of forgiveness.
Um, it's a hard decision to make. Just don't let him know we here. Even we can't. We, we haven't been able we to can't. see him yet. Like since him. they took him away um, yesterday evening, we haven't been able to look at our father at all. And um, uh, last we heard, they had not even finished. They haven't the finished his autopsy. autopsy, and it's just heart wrenching. Yeah. I just wanna just rub his hair or something. Yeah. yeah. But we can't right now, and we understand that it's a vacation. They have to do their job investigation but yes. the thing that I would take away the most with my father is he taught us about God how to fear yes. God how to love God and how to forgive yes. and each one of us forgive the killer the murderer you do yes, we, we want to wrap our arms around we him we yes. absolutely do we don't I, I honestly can say right now that I hold no, no animosity against in my heart against this man because I know that he's he a sick. sick individual. I know that, you know, because of his sickness, whatever evil overtook him that caused him to do this to my dad is not him. It, it wouldn't be something he would typically do. And I promise you, I could not do that if I did not know God, if I didn't know him as my God and my savior, I could not forgive that man. And I feel no animosity against him at all. I actually, I feel sadness in my heart for, for this him. man. I do. I feel yes, real sad. All of us. And we want to, you know, we lost our dad, but this mother lost her son. Um, lost her children his children lost their dad That's and the girl Tanya, that, that you're thinking you about know, that even in your time of grief that you're it's thinking just, about them it's just it's just what our parents taught did us. but it wasn't that they just taught us they didn't talk it they did they it. Lived it they lived it like they lived people would do things to us and we would say dad are you gonna really forgive them really and he would say yes we have to so my dad would be really proud of us, and he would want this from us. He would. And he would say, Tanya, forgive them, because they know not what they do. Debbie, you know, you, you talked about how, uh, Tanya, you talked about how your friends growing up said that they, they wish they were Godwins. I think a lot of people watching tonight, and I know certainly I speak for myself, I wish I was a Godwin right now, because you all represent your dad incredibly <laughs> well. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, Thank you. I wish you peace and, and strength in the days ahead. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank God you so bless much. you. Bless you. Mm. Who can have that in your life this morning? I mean, that's the ultimate forgiveness. I, I don't know if I've seen that lately. Come on. I don't know if I've seen that out of people's hearts. I want to say this this morning. God has freely forgiven every one of us this morning that has asked of our day. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that. What are you saying, preacher? We should practice forgiveness in every aspect of our lives. Come on, tell somebody, God, forgive me. Woo, come on, tell the other one, God's forgiven me. I want to start with an observation this morning that, that the forgiveness of sins is a, is a major biblical doctrine. The Bible's got a lot to say about the deal of God's forgiveness of our sins because that's where salvation really begins, at the forgiveness of our sins. So I want to cover a few scripture here this morning with the help of the Lord. Psalms 103 and 12. As far as the east is from the west, so has he removed our transgressions from us. Somebody ought to shout. Psalm 133 and 4. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Isaiah 38, 17. The Word of God says that, Lord, you have put all my sins behind your back. Micah 7 and 19 says you will trample our sins under your feet. 
and throw them into the depths of the ocean. Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, yes, I alone am the one who blots out your sins for my own sake, and I will never think of them again. Acts 10 and 43 says everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Let me give one more. Ephesians chapter number 1 and verse number 7. In him who Jesus Christ, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to his riches in grace. Now in other scripture. The Lord has said he would forgive and forget sins of those who have truly repented in him. Now I want to say something. Oftentimes we choose to decide when a person has, has been forgiven and has repented and then when we'll forgive them. Let me say that again. I said oftentimes we want to dictate and we want to choose when God's already forgiven that person, we want to choose when we ought to forgive them. And I want to say no matter what else I can say about forgiveness in the rest of this sermon this morning, I, oh, my, 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 I want to get something so clear this morning I, that you won't never question again in your life. Uh, salvation begins uh, when I ask Jesus to come into my heart. That means I've been forgiven. Uh, that means all my sins washed under the blood of Jesus, and you and I have been forgiven. Whoa, hallelujah. If God didn't forgive us, we'd have to shoulder every sin we walked in. Every sin that we had, we'd be weighed up under a load of guilt and a load of shame that we wouldn't be able to get up. And there's no way we could look at ourselves in the mirror every morning. There's no way we can talk. We'd be under such oppression from the devil. We, we wouldn't even be able to carry it. There's no way. But thank God this morning you and I are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that today. The Bible also has a lot to say about forgiveness of sins of others against us. And I just want to give you two examples here this morning. Number one, Mark chapter 11, verse number 26, the Word of God says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything. Now, now this is important. Jesus said if you're, if you're there and, and, and you're praying, understand where you're at here. If you're praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Then Ephesians 4 and 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgive you. Now I want to make several points. These are, these are the twin towers of forgiveness here that we just read. I want to make several points uh, 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 to go along with this scripture here this morning, and that's this. Number one, Christian is the supreme religion for forgiveness. We rest on this, folks. We rest on this forgiveness today. It begins with God, and it comes down to us. Number two, second, God only has one solution to the problem of human sin. It's the act of forgiveness if we don't accept this solution folks there's not another one going to be offered don't look for another offer from God and say I'm going to play let's take a deal this is the offer this is it third God himself has shown us in the word of God how to forgive others we're to do for others what's been done to us aren't you glad you're forgiven we're to do to others what's been done to us fourth there's a direct connection between our own spiritual health and our willingness to forgive those who have sinned against us. And I want to show you something here this morning. When you have a root of bitterness and you feel it springing up in you, how many knows you can't be healthy? You can't be healthy. There's a root of bitterness growing up inside of you. Here's what bitterness does. Bitterness 
blows out the candle of joy. You try to be happy, but you're holding some bitterness and unforgiveness, and, and you're in a torture chamber. You fa- How many has ever felt like that picture before? You want to forgive, but in your, in your heart of hearts, your mind says forgive, but in your heart you don't, and it blows out the candle of joy. You want to get up, but you're chained down. You, you've got an unforgiving spirit, and it's driven you into torture. Right? It leaves the soul in darkness, uh, and you can't get out of it. There's no way on your own. Uh, it's in a commentary by, the, by uh, Harold Hoffner. He points out that the word translated forgive uh, in, one, in one version, it, it means the Greek word to be gracious. To be gracious. It includes forgiveness, but, but it's actually a, a greater concept than that this morning. We are to extend the same grace that God has put on us. We're to extend the same grace that God has put on us. We didn't deserve it. And you think in your mind they don't deserve it. No, you didn't deserve it either. You didn't deserve to be saved. None of us did. Matter of fact, if we got what we deserved, every one of us in this building be headed toward hell if that's what we got, what we deserved. Everybody listening this morning, you and I deserve to go to hell we don't deserve heaven but it is by the grace of God that you and I are forgiven that this morning I can say I've been forgiven God's forgotten all about it he's put it under the blood and you and I are no longer in a torture chamber of an unforgiven spirit who the son has set free he's free indeed give the Lord praise for that today and that's God's plan the grace of God in us, giving it to others, it's the plan of God. But somebody would say, is it realistic to live this way? Is there been raised, is, is the standard so high? Is the standard, can anyone live like this in a fallen world? Can anybody really do this? What would a graceful life look like? Paul says, forgiving each other. What does that mean? And I want to bring several things and questions in this message this morning God's going to help us with number one what is forgiveness what is forgiveness one word means to blot out in a sense that God erased the record of the sins we commit Woo, he erased it he blotted it out Look with me back in our text in verse number 27. Here's what the writer said. Here's what Jesus shared with us. The Word of God says that this man released him. I want you to hear this this morning. If there's ever been something you've heard me say, you've got to release it. You've got to let this go, folks. If not, you will, and I promise you, you will stay in a torture chamber of that unforgiving spirit. And the man said, I release you of $19,200,000. Somebody might say, well, if that man released him of that much debt that he owed him, he, he probably didn't need it. That's not the story regardless if he needed it or not. The man was saying, I would be far better off with my $19,200,000. But somebody down the line had to show this man and the grace of God. Uh, somebody had to show him, uh, this man, come on, you don't get born rich, not, not me anyway. I, I don't know anybody in here. I mean, if you got $19,200,000, please share. I got debts. Come on. I mean, if it's just laying around, hey, man, I'm praying God will put a heavy burden on you. Hey. $19,200,000. Uh, 
And all this man, he somewhere he knew that once in probably his lifetime he, he was under a torture chamber. Maybe there was somebody that done him wrong. I, and he said, God, you've been so rich in me, Jesus. I, I've got to share this with somebody. Maybe it was one day he was down in his prayer closet uh, and he was saying, Lord, uh, let me be the man that you called me to be. Uh, if there's somebody, Lord, that you'll, you'll help me use in life, uh, let it be now. We don't know the circumstance. We don't know the, the, the full aspect of the story. Uh, but all we do know is the Word of God said he released him and forgave his debt. Another common Hebrew word means to lift and to carry away. Speaking of complete removal of our sins, somebody ought to shout amen. <laughs> It means complete removal of the, of, the, of the weight that I've had to shoulder, of the sin that's been so hard on me and I thought I had to tote it. I, the forgiveness of God is great, folks. Let me give you a few examples of forgiveness. To forgive is to turn the key. It's to open the cell and let the prisoner go free. That's forgiveness. If there's a prisoner you got locked up in your heart, I, I dare you this morning to let the forgiveness of God work and just go set him free. Just go set it free. Just go set it free. That's forgiveness. To forgive is to write in large letters across the debt, nothing owed, nothing owed. To forgive is to pound the gavel in a courtroom that says you deserve to be punished, uh, but you're not going to get it today. Not guilty. I've forgiven you. To forgive is to bumble up all the garbage uh, and all the life that's come on you and all the trash from the devil and the world. Uh, to forgive means I'm going to dispose of it. Uh, I've got to get it out of my house uh, because this garbage has been stinking me up. Uh, it's been stinking my home up, it's been stinking my life up, and it's gonna stink no more. I'm gonna bundle it up, I'm gonna tie it up, and I'm gonna drag it out and put garbage where garbage belongs, and that's in the garbage dump. I'm getting rid of it. That's forgiveness. To forgive is to sandblast a wall of graffiti, making it look like a brand new wall. Or maybe you think of yourself as a banker. In your hand is a note detailing a huge debt that's owed to you. What debts of others, I want to ask you this morning, does your note list in your hand? Maybe it be slander, fraud, on and on and on. You can carefully take that note, and I want you to look at it one more time this morning in your heart. I want you to look as you say, preacher, you just don't know. I Listen, this morning, that ain't for me to determine. That's between you and the Lord, but I wish you'd just take it this morning. I wish the Lord would anoint you to look at it and, and you'd say, you know what? I, I'm going to forgive and I'm going to break that debt that's been hanging over my life. I, and I pray you'll begin to tear it into a million pieces. I, I want you to get it so good where you can't even see it anymore. Put it in the paper shredder of your heart. I, let the Lord, how many knows that's forgiveness? When we forgive, we we consciously, before God, cancel the debt. We discard of the note. We pardon the prisoner. We release the offender. Oh, folks, don't you feel the Holy Ghost on this? The Holy Ghost is trying to say something to us. Listen to this this morning. Perhaps it will remind us what forgiveness does not mean. It's not denying that there wasn't evil done. It's not excusing sinful behavior. It's not pretending it never happened. It's not acting if the sin never happened. It's not letting others continually abuse you. So what then is forgiveness? This is the most important thing I could say, perhaps the most important sentence in this sermon so far. Forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. A choice, not a feeling. 
God never said one time in his word, you forgive them whenever you just feel like it now. God never one time in this word, and I've read it front and back several times in my life, God never said when you feel like it, you just forgive them now when you feel like it. You may not ever feel like it. That's not the Bible. Forgiveness is not about your feelings. If you've been hurt, you probably will never, ever, ever feel like forgiving somebody. Well, they hurt me. It doesn't matter. It's not a feeling. It's not a feeling. Forgiveness then is a choice. It's a decision that you make up in your heart. That's why First or First Corinthians thirteen and five tells us this. It says, "Love don't keep a record of somebody's wrongs. It's forgiveness." I know husbands and wives, they carry all the kind of, well, you know, 25 years ago you done this and I'm still carrying it. God help your soul that your mate hadn't forgive you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Well, preacher, you don't know the thing they did against me. I'm telling you this morning, let the grace of God shower in your soul and forgive it. Let it go. You're still in torture chamber, but you can be free. I said you can be free this morning. Forgiveness means letting go of the anger and the desire for revenge. I'll just let that preach for a minute. You see this morning in the true light, forgiveness is an act of mercy. It's an act of mercy toward the offender. My, 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 did y'all see the video? Oh, sometimes we hear people say, well, they don't deserve to be forgiven. Of course they don't. Nobody deserves forgiveness. Nobody. Nobody. Forgiveness is not earned. And if a person can earn forgiveness, they wouldn't have needed it in the first place. If you and I could earn it, we didn't need it, folks. We didn't need it. My, my, my. So somebody might ask, number two, how do I know when I've truly forgiven? Here's my simple answer to this question. You'll know when you've been or forgiven that one when you no longer think about it night and day. <laughs> Woo! They some vi- Come on, just lift your hands right now. They some victory going to fall on you right now. So, come on, somebody in this building needs to hear what I'm saying. Somebody listening on, on live network this morning needs to hear what this old preacher boy is saying. Lift your hands right there. If you're riding down the road, don't, don't close your eyes. <laughs> but begin to thank the Lord. I, I've been forgiven. I don't think about it day and night anymore. It means I no longer have to talk about it all the time. That's not forgiveness. It means I no longer have to live with bitterness and anger inside of me. I've let it go. I've let it go. It means that when we recall those who hurt us, we can actually, through the grace of God, bid them well. Y'all hear that lady? Man walked up to her daddy. He was minding his own business out in his own garden in his own yard. Some man seduced by Satan under the influence of sin. How did, how did that evil take place, sin? Under the influence of sin, under the, uh, we don't know how what the devil how the, the, the devils took this man's the probably the father's place he ever thought he'd be in life. Nobody nobody grew up thinking they'd be like that. Went to a man's own yard. The man's a good old guy. He don't he just minding his own business. The community loved this man. He was a beloved man of his family and community. And a man walks up to him, holds a phone in his hand while he's live on social network, and shoots him in the face. And the family says, "We forgive you. We forgive you." That's the grace of God. I can't explain it. 
said, we forgive you. We feel sorry for you. I mean, that's the grace of God. Somebody might ask this question and say, is forgiveness an event or a process? I can give you an answer. The answer is yes. It's both an event in the sense that you've got to sometime in your life decide you're going to forgive. And let me tell you, you you've got to forgive because God commanded it. You've got to forgive because, listen, this is good for your own soul. It's good for your own So Any other benefits, are, they, they, they like ice cream on a good old apple pie. <laughs> it, that, that's nice, but it ain't necessary. Think on this this morning. We've got to practice forgiveness for God's sake, not for our own sake. That ought to be enough in this room to motivate anybody. I, I can hush right now, and everybody in this building ought to be motivated enough. Number four, what about a person who says, I can forgive, but I can't forget? Let me tell you something. It's a very common statement. That's very, very common. Very, very common. And everybody in this room understands that God forgets our sins when he blots them out. Somebody ought to shout amen. He cast them into the depths of the sea. He can forget our sins because he's God. He has a power to do things like that. But we're not God. Our pains haunt us. And in pondering this problem, my man ran across the scripture in the book of Hebrews that speaks of God's forgiveness of our sins. Surely if we have trouble forgetting, what about a God who never forgets anything? God never, listen to this this morning. Hebrews 10, 17, it quotes God of saying their sins, their lawless acts, I will remember no more. I wish you'd underline that verse in the Bible, I will remember no more. God's forgiveness means he chose not to remember. Forgiveness means we choose not to remember it. Somebody shout amen. Now there's a big difference between remembering something and dwelling on it. We can all remember in this building if we try hard enough things in the past that's hurt us deeply. You can always remember. Forgiveness means I don't choose to dwell on it anymore. Clara Barton, she's the founder of the Red Cross, was talking with a friend one day. The name of the person they both knew come up years before that person had done something mean to Clara. The friend asked Barton, said, don't you remember when, when she done that to you? Clara replied, she said, I distinctly remember forgetting about that. That's forgiveness. What about the, the, the feelings of anger, that number five, that keep coming back? Corey Ten Boone tells some Christian friends who wronged her in a public and malicious way. For many days she was bitter and angry until she forgave them. But in the night she would wake up thinking about what they had done and she'd get angry all over again. It seemed the memory wouldn't go away. Help come from a pastor in the town who when she told what was happening, here's what she told her and I quote, Corey. Up in the church tower is a bell that's rung by the person pulling on a rope. When a person pulls the rope, the bell peels out. Ding dong, ding dong. What happens if he doesn't pull the rope again? Slowly the sound fades away. Listen now. And that's what forgiveness is like, ain't it? <laughs> Woo, folks, there's more in this this morning. I, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's working. What if we've been tugging at our grievance a long time? Don't be surprised if they keep coming back. Stop ringing the bell. Forgiveness is nothing less than a miracle of God. And everybody said amen. Let me say it again, what I said at the beginning of this message. Without forgiveness, there's no future. I'm going to close with this. It's during World War II, Allied soldiers had fought across the, the, their way to cross France 
and a soldier died in a bloody firefight. And after the battle was over, his buddies wanted to find a way to give him a decent burial. The only cemetery in the closest village was a Catholic cemetery, so they approached the priest, asking for permission to bury their fallen comrade there. The priest asked, is he Catholic? No, he's Protestant. With great regret, the priest said he cannot be buried here. The cemetery is reserved for the Catholic members only. So the soldiers found a suitable place outside the fence that marked the border of the cemetery. With great sorrow, they buried him and then went back to the war. Some months later, the soldiers returned to the tiny village hoping to provide a suitable marker for their friend. To their surprise and dismay, when they came to the burial spot, they could not find his grave. Not knowing what else to do, they asked the priest if he knew what had happened. He told them after they had buried their friend, he couldn't sleep at all. So one morning he got up early, moved the fence to include the body of the much-loved soldier who had died for his country. And I couldn't help but to think this is exactly what God did for us. He moved the fence. Woo, stand with us this morning. He couldn't rest. He couldn't rest while you and I were on the wrong side of the fence, folks. Think about this with me. He wanted so much, so much for us to be in this family. He wanted so much for people to be saved and set free that he sent his only begotten son to die that we could be forgiven. To die so we can be forgiven. If God's moved a fence for us, why can't we do it for other people? Why can't we do it? If God has found a way to include us in his love, why can't we do that same to people who have sinned against us? Folks, this is the heart of the gospel I'm preaching to you this morning. It's the heart of the gospel. And I pray that God's going to give us grace around this altar this morning that we don't have to carry an unforgiving spirit anymore that you're going to get out of a torture chamber all across this building. Will you bow your heads, please? Heavenly Father, to the best of our ability this morning, we preach what you give us. I believe your grace has been all over it. 